All right. Hi guys, it's Group Me, the math person, and I'll be going over the exponential, I mean the expectation and the second moment expectation for Poisson distribution. So, something key that you have to know about Poisson distribution is that the probability function for big X is equal to little x is equal to e to the negative lambda times lambda to the x over x factorial. Like this is crucial. Like know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll highlight it. Highlight, highlight. It's so important. This is going to come up a lot during probability, and this is something that you should memorize if you're taking a probability exam. But anyways, so with this information, we're going to dive right in. We also know that the expectation function is always equal to is equal to this all summation, or for continuous variable, it's just equal to x times the probability of x. Or for discrete variables, it's going to be our summation right here, summation of all x, x times px. Right, right. So with this information, I'm because this Poisson distribution is a discrete function, we'll be using our summation. So for our expectation, this is equal to our going from x equals 0 to infinity of x times our probability function, which we know is our highlighting right there, e to the negative lambda, lambda x over x factorial. And what's cool is that like because it's summing up everything from x, summing up values of x, we can actually take the e to the negative lambda outside our summation because it's not changing as we sum it up. So now our function looks like this, x lambda, x factorial. And um, so in order to solve this problem, we have to, we also have to know this one. I, I, I don't have this memorized. I don't think you guys need to memorize it either. But it's our summation for exponential function. It goes y from 0 to infinity, a to the y over y factorial. Oh, and actually, because x is 0 for this function, it can actually start at x equals 1. Because when x equals 0, this function is 0. So we can actually start this summation from x equals 1. But anyways, we have to know this function right here. And ideally, we want to try to make it look like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually, we know that x factorial is equal to, I'm going to use a different color. Side note, x factorial is equal to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, um, all the way down to 2 times 1. So I'm actually going to... Or this is also equivalent to saying x minus 1 factorial. So I'm actually going to use that property right here to simplify this function a little bit. So now we look like this. e to the negative um, lambda summation going from x equals 1 to infinity of x times x times x minus 1 factorial. You see what I did there? So I can cancel out those x's. And ideally, we want this exponent right here to also look like our, um, what is it, factorial down here, just to make it look similar. So what I'm going to do is actually fact, um, make this, so this is also equal to e to the negative lambda, summing up from x1, x is equal to 1 to infinity, and I can actually factor out a lambda, so then this can start at x minus 1, to make it more equivalent to this equation right here. So with this in mind, hey, see, doesn't that kind of resemble it? Where for us, our a is equal to lambda. Oh, no. Let me actually make this even more clear. I can actually set a variable. Let's just say, let's define a variable. x, y equals x minus 1. Right? Then we can just say the lambda e to the negative lambda summation. Hey, we gotta change our variable. If we plug in 1 into our x, that's 1 minus 1. So this is starting from 0 to infinity of lambda y over y factorial. See, this looks even more likely, right? Now you recognize that a is equal to lambda. Yeah, yeah, you see it, you see it? So then now we can actually simplify this all the way down to e to the lambda. Because again, our a is from here, and we can just plug it back in. And then this is equal to e to the negative lambda time plus lambda by our exponential rule. And that's equal to e to the 0, which is just equal to lambda. And that's how we got 
that expectation of x equals lambda. But what I'm more curious about is our e x squared, because that's what you need to find variance, right? Because our variance formula goes like this: variance of x is equal to the r e x squared minus e x, the whole thing squared. This is also another very very important formula that you should know for Poisson distribution or any distribution actually. And now we get to find what we're actually looking for: our e x squared, our expectations in the second moment. Okay, so with this, some mathematician, like, in order to find this, they thought it would be easier for us to find e x minus 1 times x. Because then this way, this ends up being x squared minus x, right? And so by the exponential property, we can actually separate this into e x squared t minus e over x. So that's what we're going to do. That's our plan. So let's just take this right here and work on that. So we're going to use the same technique we used up here where we use our probability probability density function to find our e x squared minus x. So this is so our summation is going to look like this. It's going to go from infinity and x is starting from 0 e to the negative lambda times lambda times x over x factorial times our x times x minus 1 as what we did like what we did earlier we're going to actually take the e to the negative 1 out so that's going to look like e to the negative lambda on the outside and because it's this is actually x squared minus x right so even if x is equal to 1 it's still going to be 0 and if x is equal to 2 that's when it actually starts ma mattering so we can actually adjust this summation to start at x equals 2 starting from 2 to infinity and now we just have x times x minus 1 times lambda x over x factorial and again x factorial is the same thing as saying x times x minus 1 x minus 2 blah 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 all the way down to 2 times 1. So we can actually just simplify this down to x times x minus 1, x minus 2 factorial. So let's, let me rewrite this function into that form, e to the negative lambda, summation from x equals 2 to infinity, times x, x minus 1, over x, x minus 1, x minus 2 factorial. Again, as you can see, those two cancel out, lambda x. And like what we did earlier, how we adjusted, so it resembled our graph, our equation right here, our summation for e to the a. We're going to do the same thing right here. So what that's going to look like, it's going to look like e to the negative lambda. We're going to take out some lambda square. We have to take out two of them in order for it to be lambda going from x equals 2 infinity lambda x minus 2 to match that x minus 2 on the bottom over x minus 2 factorial all right all right hey it's starting to look like what we know right so then now all we have we can just substitute define a new variable y to equal x minus 2 so that's going to look like this if i rewrite it in terms of y variable it's going to again Plugging in that 2 for x, 2 minus 2 is 0, y is starting from 0 to infinity of lambda y over y factorial. And again, this is our exact same formula that we used up here, except it, actually a is also the same value, a is also lambda. So what that's going to look like now, it's going to look like e to the negative lambda, lambda squared times e to the lambda. And as you can see, it's kind of similar in that e to the negative lambda plus lambda times lambda squared. So this is just 1 times lambda squared, which is just equal to lambda squared. Hey, but we can't end here. Remember, the whole point of doing this is so we can find e x squared. Because what we just found is just e x squared minus x. So now we, in order to find just uh, e x squared, we have to use that. Exponent, um, our expectation in the 
property right here. So, okay, so what we can do equals lambda squared, right? And we, we already know what e of x is. That's what we found earlier, which is just lambda. So it turns out that e of x squared, adding that lambda to the other side, equals lambda squared plus lambda. Woohoo! We got that, we got that. So if you want to go one step further and find the variance of x, we know that the variance of x is always going to be e of x squared minus e of x the whole thing squared. Hey, now we already have all the ingredients we need. We just found that the e of x squared is lambda squared plus lambda minus e of x squared, which we know is lambda squared. And as you noticed, the lambdas cancel out and it's equal to lambda. So as you can see, we just proved that the variance of x is lambda. Check, check.